Good morning. As we gather this morning to celebrate the word and sacrament, the Lord's presence among us this day, we remember our mass intentions. Our daily mass intentions are now at the live and in-person mass in Maher Hall at 8 a.m. Monday through Friday. And so for our mass intentions for the electronic age, we certainly remember our Father's Day Novena, our first and frontline responders, our local faith communities, as well as our family and friends. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. My sisters and brothers, as we gather this day to give thanks and praise to Almighty God, let us once again open our minds and hearts to his ongoing call to mercy, healing, and compassion. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Almighty God, you govern all things, both in heaven and on earth. Mercifully hear the heartfelt prayers of your people and bestow upon us peace in our day. Through Christ our Lord. A reading from the second book of Kings. Sennacherib, king of Assyria, sent envoys to Hezekiah with this message. Thus shall you say to Hezekiah, king of Judah, Do not let your God, on whom you rely, deceive you by saying that Jerusalem will not be handed over to the king of Assyria. You have heard what the kings of Assyria have done to all other countries. They doomed them. Will you then be saved? Hezekiah took the letter from the hand of the messengers and read it. Then he went up to the temple of the Lord, and spreading it out before him, he prayed in the Lord's presence. O Lord, God of Israel, enthroned upon the cherubim, you alone are God over all the kingdoms of the earth. You have made the heavens and the earth. Incline your ear, O Lord, and listen. Open your eyes, O Lord, and see. Hear the words of Sennacherib, which he sent to taunt the living God. Truly, O Lord, the kings of Assyria have laid waste the nations and their lands and cast their gods into the fire. They destroyed them because they were not gods, but the work of human hands, wood and stone. Therefore, O Lord, our God, save us from the power of this man, that all the kingdoms of the earth may know that you alone, O Lord, are God. Then Isaiah, son of Amoz, sent this message to Hezekiah. Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, in answer to your prayer for help against Sennacherib, king of Assyria, I have listened. This is the word the Lord has spoken concerning him. She despises you, laughs you to scorn, the virgin daughter Zion. Behind you she wags her head, daughter Jerusalem. For out of Jerusalem shall come a remnant, and from Mount Zion survivors. The zeal of the Lord of hosts shall do this. Therefore, thus says the Lord concerning the king of Assyria, He shall not reach this city, nor shoot an arrow at it, nor come before it with a shield, nor cast up siege works against it. He shall return by the same way he came, without entering the city, says the Lord. I will shield and save the city for my own sake and for the sake of my servant David. That night, the angel of the Lord went forth and struck down 185,000 men in the Assyrian camp. So Sennacherib, the king of Assyria, broke camp and went back home to Nineveh. The word of the Lord. God upholds his city forever. God upholds his city forever. Great is the Lord and woolly to be praised in the city of our God, his holy mountain, fairest of heights. 
is the joy of all the earth. God upholds his city forever. Mount Zion, the recesses of the north, is the city of the great king. God is with her castles. Renowned is he as a stronghold. God upholds his city forever. O God, we ponder your mercy within your temple. As your name, O God, so also your praise reaches to the ends of the earth. Of justice, your right hand is full. God upholds his city forever. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not give what is holy to dogs, or throw your pearls before swine, lest they trample them underfoot and turn and tear you to pieces. Do to others whatever you would have them do to you, This is the law and the prophets. Enter through the narrow gate, for the gate is wide and the road broad that leads to destruction, and those who enter through it are many. How narrow the gate and constricted the road that leads to life, and those who find it are few. The Gospel of the Lord. The golden rule. We've all heard it at one point in our lives, or in the 21st century, perhaps we've Googled it. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Or if you grew up in part of the 60s, dude, it was do unto others, then split. But the words have retained their force. We know in the depths of our hearts that is the right thing to do. Our hearts tell us that. The problem is it gets filtered through the mind and that's where it becomes relativized. Well, if they do something good for me, I'll do something good for them. We kind of just twist it around and reshape it, refashion it, so it's really convenient for me. But really, faith is never convenient. It's never convenient to believe. It's never convenient to go out of your way. It's not convenient. But faith is not 7-Eleven. It's not a convenient store. We have to get past the me and my JC attitude of life to where it's just the Lord and me and that's it. He called more than one. He has called you and he's called me. And he asks of us very simple things. Remember the simplicity of heart where God resides in the human being. Filling the soul And with the heart and the soul together, reshaping the mind, reshaping our vision, our hearing, our senses, that we might be more attuned to God, not only in prayer, but on a daily basis as we take each step of the journey, to know that he is there, also pointing out to us moments of grace, so that as we make the final judgment upon ourselves each day, The Lord points out the way to life. Do this and live. Do unto others exactly as you would have done unto you, not as has been done unto you. Because sometimes that holds bitterness, anger, jealousy, some of the seven deadly sins. But as you would have your life be, so make it for others, make it joyful. Make it something wonderful. Make it life-filled and life-giving. Make it something that brings peace, healing, and reconciliation. Make it that before all else. And therein God is and exists, unifying one heart to another. 
The Lord also mentions the narrow gate. It's hard. Don't blink, you'll miss it. Because the road is wide, and sometimes it's hard to see the narrow gate or the small path that leads through that narrow gate. Oh, the other gate to the world, to the destruction that the Lord talks about, that's a multi-lane superhighway. And we're on it most of the time. Take a moment as you travel through this life to find the narrow gate, because it's there. Kind of like playing a video game. What was it Frogger? That was kind of a bizarre thing. I watched that one. I didn't play that one because it was too frustrating. I died every single time. But you had to find every step, everything, in the midst of all the challenges of life to get to the next level. Life is similar to that. Sometimes we give up because we don't like the challenge. We're lazy as people, kind of lazy at heart. But the Lord says, don't be that lazy. Wake up. Understand, look, listen, learn, follow. Do to others as you would have done to you. As you would have the good things done to you in life, be the first. Be the first to do those to others. Break the ice. Make the gesture, the overture, and see what happens. Don't wait for the human heart to respond. But with the divine heart, that burns with great fire and love of God within you. Be the first. God bless you. Gather this day, give me thanks and praise to Almighty God. Let us offer our prayers and petitions to the Lord who truly hears and answers that our community of faith may always recognize Jesus in those who are poor, disabled, or marginalized by our society. We pray to the Lord that all those in positions of leadership and authority may treat those entrusted to their care and guidance with dignity and justice. We pray to the Lord. that all who serve our country may be safe, especially our first and frontline responders and all those in the armed forces. We pray to the Lord. That those who are sick or suffering may experience God's comfort, and that those who have died may experience the fullness of life in God's kingdom. We pray to the Lord. And for those prayers, hopes, and petitions we hold this day, in the silence of our hearts. Father of mercy and Lord of all compassion, you have blessed us with this new day an opportunity to once again hear the voice of your Son resound in the depths of our hearts. In your kindness, hear and answer the prayers we offer in faith this day. And by the grace and the power of the Holy Spirit, may we walk in the footsteps of Christ. We make our prayer this day and always, through Christ our Lord.
Pray, my sisters and brothers, that this our sacrifice and the sacrifices of our own lives may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O Lord, grant that we may worthily participate in these sacred mysteries. For whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed us in your own image and set us over the whole world in all its wonder to rule in your name over all you have made and forever praising your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy. Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are indeed holy, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly ask, by that same Spirit, Graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins, do this in memory of me. the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving 
this holy and living sacrifice. Look upon the offering of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Paul the Apostle, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. Lord, may this sacrifice of our reconciliation advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, your servant, Pope Francis, Gerald and Alberto, the bishops of this diocese, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayer of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children, scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, grant kind admittance into your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow upon the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. United this day in voice and heart, joining Catholics and Christians throughout the world with faith, hope, and confidence, let us once again echo the prayer of the Savior. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not upon our sins, but upon the faith of your church gathered here this day, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. My sisters and brothers, for the world around us, those who are near and dear to us, let us offer a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. My sisters and brothers, at this time I invite you to pray the prayer for spiritual communion. Let us pray. O Lord, pour over us the spirit of your love, and in your kindness, help those you have nourished by this heavenly bread to be of one mind and one heart, through Christ our Lord. As was mentioned yesterday, and you've seen it probably on the website and the parish bulletin, we're slowly reopening and getting things back to normal. We're heading that direction, it's wonderful. And our parish office is open as well. The hours, the normal hours, are Monday through Friday from 8.30 a.m. until 5.30 p.m. On Tuesdays and Thursdays, we're extending the closing time up to 7 p.m. For those who are coming back from work, uh, if you didn't get a chance to get out during the day, uh, for now, those are our parish offices. We'll go back to the regular offices eventually. But just to get everybody on even keel and get things going again, it is so good to have you back with us. Live and in person on the Sunday Masses, even though limited numbers, but always, and through these several months, we truly appreciate you being with us on the internet and through those broadcasts. It truly makes a a big difference in our lives. The Lord be with you. May the grace and blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon you, remaining with you now and forever. Our celebration is ended. Let us go forth throughout this day to love and serve the Lord.